Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Span Bird, Improving Pre-Training by Representing and Predicting Spans. This came out in the year of 2020 in the month of January from Facebook AI Research, Allen Institute of AI, Princeton University, and Allen School of CSA. Okay, so let's go through the paper. So they say, we present Span Bird, a pre-training method that is designed to better represent and predict spans of text. Our approach extends Bird by masking contiguous random spans rather than random tokens and training a span boundary representation to predict the entire content of the mask span without relying on the individual token representations within it. Okay, so what they are saying is we mask contiguous random spans rather than random tokens. So if we can recall about BERT, one of the objective on which it was trained was mask language modeling in which you essentially mask out 15 to 20% of the words in a sentence and try to predict those masked words on the output end. So what these guys are saying, we introduce a random contiguous span that needs to be predicted by the model instead of single tokens. Okay. And the second enhancement that they talk about to train a span boundary representation to predict the entire content of the masked span. Okay. So they are introducing one more loss based on start and end of the boundaries that will be used for predicting the inside tokens of those spans. And then they talk about span bird constantly outperforming bird and other baselines. Okay, let's read further. We present span bird a pre training method that is designed to better represent and predict the spans of text. Our method differs from bird in both the masking scheme and the training objectives. So, yeah, the first thing that we talked about the masking scheme is different from bird because bird used to randomly mask tokens in a sequence. Whereas in this paper, they talk about masking random contiguous spans rather than individual tokens. And also they mention about different training objective. So since BERT was trained on two objectives, which was mask language modeling, which was about predicting the mask token on the output end. And then next was NSP, which is next sequence prediction, which tried to model if two sequences of text followed each other or not. And in this paper, they talk about introducing a span boundary objective where the boundary words would play some role in the loss function, which we'll see in the later section. Okay, so that's what they write. We mask random contiguous spans rather than individual tokens. This is the first difference. And the second is we introduce a novel span boundary objective. So model learns to predict the entire mass span from observed token at its boundary. So this is exactly what we discussed. Okay, so let's go forward. To implement span BERT, we build a well-tuned replica of BERT, which itself substantially outperforms the original BERT. While building a baseline, we found the pre-training on single segments instead of two half-length segments with the next sentence prediction objective considerably improves the performance on downstream task. Therefore, we add our modifications on top of tuned single sequence BERT baseline. Okay, so what they're saying is they found that pre-training on single segments rather than two half segments performed better which means the objective of predicting the mass tokens performed better instead of combining it with the next sequence prediction task, which was originally done in the BERT paper. So they went ahead and tuned their model on single sequence BERT baseline and discarded the NSP loss term from there. Okay, let's go forward. So in the background section, authors have talked about the BERT architecture. So let's go through that once. So this is a notation that they talk about given a sentence of word or a subword token X, which are all of these things. Bird trains an encoder that produces a contextualized vector representation of each token. So this is the function that you're learning, which is this encoder function that takes in the input of all the sequence of all the words or subwords and outputs their vector representation. So pictorially, it could be seen as you input each of these tokens, which could be words or subtokens. You pass them through the encoder block which is the BERT model and at the output end for each token, you get its respective contextualized embeddings. So this is the main BERT model. So the original BERT paper talks about two loss functions. Let's call it L1 and L2. Where L1 being mass language modeling and L2 being NSP, which is next sequence prediction. So let's read about them. MLM is the task of creating the missing tokens in a sequence from their placeholders, specifically a subset of tokens Y in X is sampled and substituted with a different set of tokens. In BERT's implementation, Y account for 15% of tokens of X. Of those, 80% are replaced with mask, 10% are replaced with random token, and 10% are kept unchanged. The task is to predict the original token of Y from the modified input. Okay, so what they mean by this is, 
let's say this is the model that we have so at any point of time from the input sequence which is x1 to xn i would randomly choose 15 percent of the words if let's say the length was 100 so i would randomly choose 15 words of which 80 percent i'll put as mask token and the remaining 20 percent i'll shuffle up them with different words or even might not do that so that is the scheme of how you introduce perturbations in the input so let's say if x2 was put as mask token so the model is supposed to predict what has to come at this position considering the context to its left as well as the context to its right so here the model will be producing an embedding that goes through a softmax layer giving a distribution over the full vocabulary and you would choose a word that has a maximum probability so this is the concept of mlm so authors mentioned about a key difference bird selects each token y independently by randomly selecting a subset in span bird we define y by randomly selecting a contiguous spans so which is already we have discussed while we were reading the abstract going forward talking about nsp which is next sentence prediction the nsp task takes two sequences xa and xp as the input and predicts whether xb is the direct continuation of xa this is implemented in bird by first reading xa from the corpus and then either by reading xp from the point where xa ended or randomly sampling xp from a different point okay so what they're saying is you give your bird model two sequences let's say xa and xp which are follow-up sentences in the original corpus in the output you'd want to train whether it was a zero or one which is basically a binary classification setting so that's what they say and for generating xp for the training sequence xb was from the point where x ended so that is the true sample that you would be creating for creating the negative samples it would randomly sample xp from the full corpus so that is how you create your positive and negative samples so this is the second task on which the bird was trained additionally a special token cls was added to xa and xp to form as input where the target cls is whether xp indeed follows xa or not in the corpus okay so this is exactly what we saw at this place so this is the final cls embedding that you get post that you can apply any classifier and get a zero one prediction now let's go forward and stand the main contribution of the paper in detail so this is a very good diagram that authors have proposed i would like to discuss that first yeah so this one if you see it carefully so this is an illustration of how the span board training was done the span an american football game is mass so if you can see these are four contiguous mass tokens corresponding to the sequence of an american football game the span boundary objective sbo uses the output representation of the boundary tokens x4 and x9 which are in blue okay to predict each token in the mass span the equation shows mlm and sbo loss term for predicting the token which is marked by the position embedding p3 is the third embedding of x4 okay so if you see this diagram very carefully so we had a perturbed sequence this in which we have created a mass sequence against the sequence of words which was an american football game we pass the full sequence through the encoder block and at the output end we would want to predict all of these mass tokens which is from x5 to x8 so for example if we were to predict for the token x7 which is football this would be the equivalent loss that we would propagate backwards which is a mixture of mass language modeling and span boundary objective so as you can see mlm is nothing but the negative log likelihood if you have x7 what is the chances of you seeing football so this is one of the losses on which the original bird was trained as well in which you take the embedding of x7 that is learned via self-attention you map it to the full vocabulary and later pass it through a softmax to get a distribution over the full vocabulary so that is the probability that we are talking about so that term along with again a log likelihood term that is conditioned on x4 x9 and p3 where x4 is the embedding of the starting of the mass sequence and x9 is the boundary where the mass sequence ends and p3 is nothing but the position of that term in that mass sequence so the mass sequence was of four length which is x5 to x8 and we were to predict x7 which is at third position in that span so this p3 corresponds to that so given these three embedding representations we want to see how good a model is to predict the football so these are the two losses that go around in tuning the bird which they call a span bird so this is the main idea now let's see the theory if they have anything else to add so under span masking they again talk about the same thing you have set of inputs you select some subset y 
and you sample the spans of text until the masking budget is done. Okay. So one thing to note over here is the keeper upper length to the span length, which is 10. And on an average, the span length is around 3.8, which is around four words. Then they again talk about how things are done in BERT. We do the exact same things. So that is the whole idea of span masking, which we have already seen through the diagram. Okay, talking about span boundary objective. Formally, we denote the output from transform encoder for each token in a sequence by this. So this is the output sequence or the vector representation of each of the input token. And this is the mask sequence where S indicates the starting position, E indicates the ending position. So X, S minus one and X, E plus one are the boundary tokens that encapsulates the span, whereas this is the positional encoding. So you want to learn a function F that takes in all these three inputs and outputs a label, which is what word has to come over there. Okay, so one thing to notice over here is we implement a representation function S as a two layered feed forward network with a GELU activation. Okay, so this is the equation that they talk about. So as we saw, we had two loss terms. One was the MLM, which is the original BERT loss. Other was the SBO, which is based on the boundary words. So for that, they train essentially a two layer network with its input as the representation of the starting boundary word, the representation of the ending boundary word, and the positional embedding of the word, which is related to the span. So that is the first hidden representation that you get. You pass it through the first layer that has weight W1. Then you apply the nonlinear function GELU. So GELU stands for Gaussian Error Linear Unit. It's an activation function that is used in most recent transformers such as BERT and GPT-2. And it has a curve that looks something like this, if I remember correctly. Post that, you apply a layer normalization, which is one of the normalization mechanisms that normalizes input across the features and discards any interaction within the batches. So with that, you get one more hidden representation H1. And finally, you pass through one more layer and you get YI. So this is the YI, which is nothing but a vector representation for the token XI and is used to compute the cross entropy loss, just like the mass language modeling objective. Okay. And we have already seen that span bird sums the loss from both span boundary and the regular mass language model. So this is the formula. So for any XI, you will be calculating this loss as well as this loss. So if you notice, this is the final representation that you get post self attention and all those mechanisms. And then you predict what should be the actual label over there. Whereas the second term, if you notice, you are conditioning on YI, which is nothing but the output that you get from by passing your input through this two layer neural network. And then you predict what should be the output. Okay. So that is the full idea. Then they finally talk about the single sequence training, which we have already seen and authors have already told in the introduction section. They found that the next sequence prediction loss was not at all helping them out increasing the accuracy, which helps them to simply sample a single contiguous span that is of 512 tokens, rather than two half segments that sum up to that number. So since the maximum length that BERT could process is 512 tokens, so since they didn't use the NSP objective, so the input could now extend to the 512 length, rather than if they were to use NSP, which was done in original BERT paper, the 512 length would essentially be over a sum from two sentences rather than a single sequence. So that was the advantage that they got. Okay, so I guess we are done with the paper now. Now they have experiments and all. So some of the things that I would want to point out, first of all, I felt this paper was really interesting and it had a nice research component to it. And, and the idea of predicting the span instead of random words, nowadays I see it to be happening across many models such as T5, Pegasus, but again, all of those are in an encoder decoder setting, whereas this is happening just in the encoder setting. So that is a different I could see. Also, the idea of using sentence boundary as another loss term was pretty unique. So that's it for this paper. If you like such content, do share it with your friends. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and do like the video. Thank you.